Hi folks and welcome to our meeting tonight. I'm Josh and I'm from Bracknell Gospel Hall. Tonight we're going to read Acts chapter 10 um, and some of the verses that Peter spoke there. But don't worry if you don't have a Bible, uh, the verses used today are in the description below. So it's Acts chapter 10 and we're looking at verse 34 onwards. And it starts, then Peter opened his mouth and said, in truth, I perceive that God shows no partiality, but in every nation, whoever fears him and works righteousness is accepted by him. The word which God sent to the children of Israel, preaching peace through Jesus Christ, he is Lord of all. That word, you know, which was proclaimed throughout all Judea and began from Galilee after the baptism, which John preached how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and with power, who went about doing good and healing all those who oppressed, were oppressed by the devil, for God was with him. And, he, and we sorry, are witnesses of all things which he did, both in the land of the Jews and in Jerusalem, whom they killed by hanging on a tree. Him, that's the Lord Jesus, God raised up on the third day and showed him openly not to all the people, but to witnesses chosen before by God, even to us who ate and drank with him after he arose from the dead. And he commanded us to preach to the people and to testify that it is he who was ordained by God to judge, be the judge of the living and the dead. To him all the prophets witness that through his name, whoever believes in him will receive the remission of sins and we pray that God will bless the reading of his word. Now that came from the Bible, that came from Acts chapter 10 and it's the Acts of the Apostles so it's a book written just after the Lord Jesus has died on the cross and it's all about the beginning of the church. Now I just want to talk to you about some of those statements that were in those verses. Now last week we spoke about VE Day that victory day in Europe for those um, who had fought in, in the war and those that had um, come through it. And Paul talked about um, those of us who are Christians and the VE day for Christians. So the day when the Lord Jesus died, when, our, when, the, when salvation was made available to us, when the Lord Jesus rose from the grave. And what a great hope and a great joy it is to know that we serve a risen saviour. But what I want to talk to you about is actually that the, the Bible goes even further because the Lord Jesus was around Jews when he was here on earth. But in our first verse it says that God shows no partiality. Now Peter had just has a, had a vision coming down from heaven and God had showed him a, a sheet of, of white and on it were all sorts of animals. Now the law said that the Jews couldn't eat certain animals um, and so Peter based on what he knew said to God I cannot eat, I can't eat what you're asking me to do and three times God asked Peter to get up and eat what he had provided. Now this was just a picture of God showing to Peter that the gospel was for more than just the Jews. It was for the Gentiles. For every other nation in the world, Jesus could be their saviour too. So I want to talk about the V day for Gentiles. The day when people like me found out that we could have our sins forgiven. You see, God loves everyone. That great verse in John chapter 3 and verse 16, for God so loved the world, not just the Jews. He loves the whole world that he sent his only begotten son. So it says that God shows no partiality. Galatians 3 and verse 28 to 29 says, there is neither Jew nor Greek, there is neither bond nor free, there is neither male nor female, for ye are all one in Christ Jesus. And if ye be Christ's, 
Then are ye Abraham's seed and heirs according to the promise. Now Abraham's seed are those that have faith. Hebrews 11 talks about the great men and women who had faith in God. And that's what God wants us to have. He wants us to have faith in him. Faith in the person of the Lord Jesus. But it starts with a fear. Now that's not a, a fear of being frightened. Um, a fear of, uh, let's say, arachnophobia. A intolerable fear of spiders. Now, I don't mind spiders, so in my household, I'm the one that comes with the glass, puts the paper over it, and gets it out of the house. It's not that sort of terrifying fear. It's a reverence, it's a respect for who God is. Proverbs chapter one and verse seven says, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge, but fools despise wisdom and instruction. How do you perceive what the Bible says? Is it foolishness or is it wisdom? You see, the Bible says that it is the breathed word of God and everything that comes from God is good and worth us listening to. But you've got to respect him. You know, we have to respect those who we want to learn from. You go to university and you respect the lecturer in front of you because they've been in their field a lot longer. They have experience. God is the one who has created the world. From everlasting to everlasting, he is utterly deserving of our reverence and our respect. You see, God is a God of righteousness. For the righteous Lord loveth righteousness, his countenance doth behold the upright. God loves righteousness. And that's because he is good. Everything in him is good. Everything is right. It's true. Romans 3 verse 22 says, even the righteousness of God, which is by faith of Jesus Christ unto all and upon all them that believe, for there is no difference. How amazing is that? That we can have the righteousness of God. We can be called righteous in his sight. And if you watched um, a video from a few weeks ago, we talked about justification, being declared righteous by God, that our sins are forgiven and God can say that we are right in his sight. Peter talks about being accepted by him. Ephesians 1 talks about, in verse 6 and 7, to the praise of the glory of his grace, wherein he hath made us accepted in the beloved. Now that's the Lord Jesus, the beloved one of God, in whom we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of sins according to the riches of his grace. Friends, you can have your sins forgiven. A price has been paid by the blood of the Lord Jesus and the offer is open to each and every one of us if we might believe that our sins will be forgiven and that we will have acceptance with God. And it's because of his grace. It's because he wants to give us everything that we don't deserve. Now Peter then went on and talked about the word that had been sent. Now that's referring again to the Lord Jesus. In John chapter 1 it says, And the word was made flesh and dwelt among us, and we beheld his glory, the glory as of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. The word became flesh. God became man. Man and God 100% joined together and that is who God sent. The Bible talks about um, God saying in heaven, whom shall I send? Whom will go for me? And there's a cry and that cry is from the Lord Jesus, here I am, send me. The Lord Jesus willingly wanted to come and wanted to come to earth 
to live amongst men to show us what our lives should have been like maybe you say well that's a bit rubbish because it shows me that I'm a sinner and in reality that's true but by doing that he showed that he was perfect he was able to offer himself on the cross he was able to lay down his life that our sins might be forgiven and then the offer is open to us that we might believe that we might be called the sons of God you see the Lord Jesus he came to preach peace God didn't send the Lord Jesus to condemn us but that we might be free John chapter 16 verse 33 says these things and this is the Lord Jesus speaking he says these things I have spoken unto you that in me ye might have peace in the world you will have tribulation but be of good cheer I have overcome the world that's why even in these difficult times Christians can have peace we can trust in God because the Lord Jesus has said that he has overcome the world he has overcome everything in it and if he's overcome it and we're in him and we're trusting in him we know he's in control what a great hope what a great reassurance that each and every one of us can have but firstly we've got to make him our saviour Philippians 4 verse 7 says and the peace of God which passes all understanding shall keep your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus that's a promise to Christians a promise that God will fill us with a peace that we really can't understand can't really explain and really that's why we preach good news we preach it because God gives us something which is overwhelming it's so big it's so great that my words are so feeble to explain to you how amazing the Lord Jesus is how privileged people are men and women boys and girls to say that the Lord Jesus is their Savior now Peter went on and said that the Lord Jesus was Lord of all 1 Corinthians 5 and verse 6 says for through for sorry for though there be that are called gods whether in heaven or earth as there be gods many and lords many but to us is but one God the father of whom are all things and we in him and one Lord the Lord of all Jesus Christ by whom are all things and we by him the Lord Jesus is the Lord of all he's the one by which this whole world exists the Lord Jesus was there in creation forming the world making the world and that is who we rely on that's who we have our confidence in in the Lord Jesus and again we talk about the word Acts 2 verse 21 says and it shall come to pass that whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be saved there's the invitation for you for me that if we call upon the name of the Lord if we ask the Lord Jesus to save us he will we've talked before about God not being a liar he's truthful and he wants you to believe in the Lord Jesus in verse 22 it says ye men of Israel hear these words Jesus of Nazareth a man approved of God among you by miracles and wonders and signs which God did by him in the midst of you as ye yourselves also know you know there's a story to tell there's news there's a gospel to tell and it's centered in the person of the Lord Jesus it's an offer for you today if you will believe in him if you'll realize that you're a sinner Peter realized Peter knew 
what he was like compared to the Lord Jesus. He even said to the Lord Jesus, depart from me for I am a sinful man. When he doubted the Lord Jesus. But the amazing thing is this, that even though he doubted, even though he was a sinner, God loved him. And God loves you. God loves me. And he sent the Lord Jesus to demonstrate that love to you in that dying on the cross, your sins might be forgiven. You might have a relationship with God through the Lord Jesus Christ. Now Peter says that there's this baptism of John. And what was that about? This baptism of repentance. You see, the children of Israel for many years had been taken away from God. Their lives, they'd not listened to God, and slowly their hearts had turned away from him. And John was sent as a forerunner for the Lord Jesus, someone to set the way for who was coming. Like a flag bearer running through a town, or a town crier saying, here comes the queen, here comes the king. So here was John, bringing people to realise that they needed to repent, that they were sinners, but that someone greater than him was coming. John said that I'm not even worthy to loose the sandals on his feet. Jesus was so much greater than John, but he was setting the way for people to realise that they needed something greater than themselves. They needed the Lord Jesus. Lovely words about the Lord Jesus. He went about doing good. I'm sure all of us wake up in the morning and we say, do you know what? I want to do good today. And then maybe the kids run out or you get a phone call at work and it's gone in a flash. And we think something, we say something and that opportunity to do good is gone. But you know what with the Lord Jesus? That never happened. He always did good. And it's, it's really the understatement to say that the Lord Jesus just did good because he did so much more. The character of what he did was amazing. But it's, it's amazing to think that everything that the Lord Jesus did, he did good. And that was just showing that in him was no sin. The Bible says that in him was no sin, neither was guile found in his mouth. He thought nothing bad. He said nothing bad. It couldn't even come into his mind. The Lord Jesus was perfect. Deuteronomy 32 verse 4 says, He is the rock. His work is perfect. For all his ways are judgment or justice, a God of truth and without iniquity. Just and right is he. And we talked about last week how the Lord Jesus had been seen of so many witnesses. Eyewitnesses three times to the disciples, then over 500 people and then even Saul on the road to Damascus. Saul seeing an eyewitness to the Lord Jesus in glory. As the Lord Jesus would turn around and say to him, Saul, Saul, why persecutest thou me? The Lord Jesus asking him, showing who he was. And from that very day, Saul's life was changed. And our lives were changed of the benefit because Saul became a great missionary to bring the word of God as we read out of Judea into Samaria until the rest of the world so that we might believe in the Lord Jesus. Acts 2 and verse 23 talks about how the Lord Jesus was crucified and raised from the dead. Him, that's the Lord Jesus, being delivered by the determinate counsel and foreknowledge of God. Oh yes, God knew about it. It was God's will that ye have taken, that was the Jews, and by wicked hands have crucified and slain him. 
whom God hath raised up, having loosed the pains of death, because it was not possible that he should be holden of it. You see, the Lord Jesus, we've spoken about, he was perfect, he was spotless. But the Lord Jesus has died because the Bible says that the wages or the reward of what we're going to receive for our lives is death. But the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ, our Lord. And there's a challenge right at the end of what Peter said. The judge of the living and the dead. Revelation 20 talks about a great white throne and him that sat on it from whose face the earth and heaven fled away and there was no, no, found no place for them. And I saw the great, the dead, sorry, great, small and great, stand before God and the books were opened. And another book was opened, which is the book of life. And the dead were judged out of those things which were written in the books according to their works. And the sea gave up the dead which were in it and death and hell delivered up the dead which were in them and they were judged every man according to his works and death and hell were cast away into the lake of fire this is the second death and whosoever was not found written in the book of life was cast into the lake of fire we want you to know that this offer of salvation is to save you not only from your sin, but the punishment of sin. The punishment of God against your sin. The Lord Jesus has made provision on the cross that you might have your sins forgiven if you'll believe in him. He's taken the punishment. He's taken the pain. He's taken everything. But you need to receive it. But if you don't, there's a warning that God will have to judge you for your sin. He can't sweep it under the carpet. So as the Bible says, today is the day of salvation. Trust him. Take him at his word. See that this, just as Peter was preaching, just as we've looked at those few comments, as he's talked about the Lord Jesus, as he's talked about how he was crucified and slain for you. Take him at his word. Believe in him. And call upon him and receive him as your saviour. We thank you that you've, you've listened and just pray that you'll be blessed as we've thought about the great, amazing, wonderful person of the Lord Jesus. Take care.